Hello lovelies, in this video I'm going to be looking at photosynthesis for your GCSE science. Now there is an equation, word and symbol equation we need to learn in here, and then we need to learn the structure of the leaf and how it all relates together. So there are a few little bits for us to go over. So get yourself a drink and a pen and some paper and we can get started. Photosynthesis is the process where plants use light to make things. Specifically, where plants can make their own food using light. The equation for this is carbon dioxide, which is gas that comes from the air, plus water, which is taken up by the roots, turns into using light, and please notice that light is above the arrow here, not on this side, not on this side. Glucose, which is used or stored, and oxygen gas, which is released back. You may be asked to give the symbol equation for this. Now, only write the symbol equation down if you're asked for it. CO2, carbon dioxide, plus H2O, water. C6H12O6, glucose, plus O2, oxygen. Now, we need to balance this. It is relatively easy to remember this one, 666. Please do not try and work this out in the exam. It will take you way too much time. My advice is to only write down the symbol equation if you are asked for it, because there are many more ways you can make mistakes here. CO2 is carbon dioxide, but if you write a small o, then that's cobalt metal and is wrong, meaning you will not get the marks for it. A big two is wrong, and a little two, a little O and a big two is wrong. You will not get marks for writing down any of the wrong symbols. So if it asks for the equation, play it safe and write down the words unless it specifically asks for the symbol equation. This all happens in chlorophyll in the leaves. Chlorophyll is the green stuff in leaves. Photosynthesis occurs in leaves. They can absorb sunlight. A common exam question will refer to photosynthesis in roots. For example, why don't roots have chloroplasts? Or why can you see chloroplasts under a microscope? Or why don't roots photosynthesize? They are underground. There is no sunlight. They are never going to do photosynthesis down there because they don't have chloroplasts, they don't have the sunlight. That is a question you might assume um, that you get in the exam that all plant cells do photosynthesis, not roots. The green colour in plants comes from chlorophyll. This is the pigment that absorbs sunlight and is found in chloroplasts. This is where photosynthesis happens. Palisade cells will have lots of chloroplasts and now they are near the top so they can easily absorb the sunlight. The spongy mesophyll layer will also have lots of chloroplasts. The stoma, the opening on the bottom, will allow carbon dioxide in and water vapour can diffuse out of this gap as needed. Photosynthesis and respiration are opposites. It could be easy to confuse them, but please try to remember that the opposites are not to confuse them. Here we have our equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water turns into glucose plus oxygen. Whereas for respiration, glucose plus oxygen turns into carbon dioxide plus water. Photosynthesis will occur in plants and it will occur during the day when sunlight is present. Respiration also occurs in plants. It generally happens during the night when there is no photosynthesis. It also occurs in animals. That is how we get our energy. The glucose that is produced in photosynthesis is used for lots of different things. It can be stored for later. Now, the plant intends to use this itself, but if it stores it as starch, then we might come along and use it. For example, potatoes. It can use the glucose for building more bits of plant, for example, using cellulose to build cell walls. 
Along with lipids, it can be stored in seeds to provide energy for the next generation to grow. And with nitrates that are taken up via the roots to form amino acids that make proteins. There are a number of factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis and we can look at this in a practical. We can measure the release of oxygen that is coming out of the photosynthesis equation. We can measure the number of bubbles coming out. And there are two ways that we can do this. We can simply count the number of bubbles or we can be a bit more sophisticated and we can use a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of bubbles that are coming out. You can change various things in this practical. You can change the light intensity by changing the distance of the lamp from the pondweed or algal balls, whatever it is you're using. Or you can change the colour of the light or you can change the concentration of carbon dioxide that is used in the water. You need to be able to know about the different factors that affect the rate of synthesis and be able to recognise and draw the graphs of them. So starting off with light intensity. As we increase the light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis will increase, but only up to a point. After a point, something else will become the limiting factor. That could be carbon dioxide concentration. As we increase the concentration of carbon dioxide that is available, then we are going to get an increase in the rate of photosynthesis, but again, only up to a point. Temperature will also affect the rate of photosynthesis. The rate will increase as temperature increases, but only up to a certain point. After a certain point, the temperature will be too high and the proteins involved in photosynthesis will start to denature. 